All right, good morning. Um, thanks for coming. Um, my name is Adam, and I work for Red Hat as a software engineer, and I'm the CentOS Stream engineering lead. Um, and this talk is going to be about CentOS Stream and things, but first, let's start with Fedora. Fedora is a blue square. That's amazing. And they produce a bunch of things. Um, they make... Um, who's doing that? Why would you do that? Well, but okay, there's a game controller. Who has a Fedora gaming PC? I think they have a point there. Yeah, it's great. Is that a Commodore pet? I hope no. That's a laptop. But anyway, Fedora is like, they're doing a bunch of cool things, right? And I'm not here to talk about any of this. Um, I'm here to talk about this event that happens every like three-ish years when Red Hat takes a few things from Fedora and they make the next version of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. But of course, they don't do that like directly because that would be a lot of work done in secret and why would you do that? They used to do that, but that's not cool. Um, they do it in public in something called CentOS Stream. Um, but I'm not here to talk about RHEL either. So let's forget about RHEL for a moment and let's just focus on CentOS Stream. What is it? It's a Linux OS maintained by RHEL engineers that you can use and contribute to. Um, so, okay, I lied. Let's talk about the relationships <laughs> to <laughs> Fedora and RHEL. This is what happens. Um, we know Fedora Rawhide, right? That's where like development in Fedora happens. And then every like six months, a new version of Fedora comes out. Many people are using Fedora 40, maybe. Um, and this is Fedora. And then there's also an ELN, which is like a rebuild of Rawhide with RHEL build flags. And that's where you can preview the next major version of RHEL. Um, and then every like three years, a CentOS stream is created. And then from that, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Um, right now, um, this is happening with CentOS Stream 10. There's like three phases. There's the bootstrap phase where like the sources are common with Fedora um, and everything is getting really set up. Then at some point it branches off. ELN becomes CentOS Stream 11-ish preview and we have a pre-release of CentOS Stream. And then there's the release date and that goes for like the five-ish years that eventually RHEL has created from that. If you're all engineers, I know you might be saying that like RHEL already exists, but like it doesn't matter. From an outside perspective, <laughs> this is what's happening. And right now we're here with CentOS Stream, so it's available as a preview, as a pre-release. We don't push all the images out yet, but it's already out there signed. The test suites are not passing, but we're getting there. Um, <laughs> and of course, <laughs> yeah, it's... It's not ready. It's not ready yet. Um, and there's also CentOS Stream and RHEL 9, of course, as well. Um, you might ask, when are we going to release 10? And my answer would be like maybe autumn or fall, whatever you call it here. Um, we don't have a set date because there's no point in like setting a specific day because what if we don't make it or what if we like delay it too much? So fall-ish, that's where it's probably gonna come out. Um, all right, so let me tell you about how it's made, about the pipeline, and how it all works. So I have this diagram, there's like three phases. Um, sources, builds, and release. What's interesting that sources are synced between CentOS Stream and RHEL. And they're always the same. If something gets merged into CentOS Stream, it gets merged in RHEL. Then builds, they're sort of coupled between CentOS Stream and RHEL. That's a technical term. I'm, go I'm going to go to into that in more later. And then release the CentOS Stream stuff release that I'm going to talk about, and then RHEL things that you don't need to really know about. Um, all right, so let's start with Jira. Do you really think I would exact things from one? No. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right, one slide. Um, issues, redhat.com. That's the RHEL project, and that's where all changes and bugs are tracked, and that's where communication with maintainers happens. Everything happens in Jira that happens to RHEL. So that's where you can follow. All right, no more Jira, I promise. <laughs> CentOS Stream Sources. <laughs> this is sort of the workflow that it happens. Um, there's a merge request coming in. Of course, Jira tickets exist first, and it gets it's just created, automatically tested, and then gets merged into CentOS Stream Disk Git. This is the URL I'm gonna show you in a bit. And then 
if it lands in CentOS Stream, it lands in RHEL automatically. Um, so let me show you how it actually looks in the web browser. Of course, I can't could do a screenshot. So there's a tablet showing it. There's the URL. This is a systemd package merged five days ago when I was making the slides. Now you can see when I made the slides. Um, and if you scroll down, there's the test result. We're using Zool CI. It's a public service. Um, yeah, that was just the packages. And if you go to, if you click on commits, it actually goes to the changes tab, and it's going to show you um, rel and a number. That's a ticket in Jira, and that's how it looks in Jira. Um, Issuesforhead.com slash things slash the ticket, and that's just like where everything is tracked. Um, so you can see all the changes in there. If I go, yeah. hmm? That ticket was recorded by Pat. Yeah, it was. I know. <laughs> it was a rebase. Um, going back to the repo, going back to the main repo, and then the sources. You can see the spec file. You can see all sorts of files. There's a file named sources. This is the same layout as in Fedora. And the file sources, that's not the sources. That's just like hashes of the sources. But I can show you how to do that. But I would need a terminal for that. I'll need to find one. Oh, yeah, that will go. That's fine. All right. So let's try. Um, but who knows what's running there. So let's start with the empty Fedora container. So we'll do Fedora 40. All right. And we're going to install a package called send package. And we're going to just confirm. That's going to take a while. Send package is something like fat package for Fedora contributors. It's like a wrapper around Git. It can also submit builds to Koji. Not for you, because you're not Red Hat engineers, probably. But you can use it to clone packages very easily. Um, we'll just have to wait for the mysterious system to finish. All right, there we go. So I will type just before we clone it, we need to go to like a directory somewhere. And we're there, and we will type, I think, send package clone dash A and the name of the package. That's it. The dash A is anonymous, so you don't have to authenticate. And that's going to clone a Git repo. You don't have to know the URL, you just do the name. And we're going to go in there. Right now, I could do like Git branch or send package branch dash A to see the branches. I didn't do that. I just used the default branch. So we can do send package SRPM. If you do that, you will get a beautiful animation like that. And a source RPM is going to pop out. Um, that's how you get all the sources. There's more commands. You can do send package dash dash help. And you can have a look there. That's sources. OK, let's talk about builds. You didn't make the computer explode. Why would it explode? <laughs> <laughs> All right, sources, sort of couple. What does it mean? Let's have a look. There's like stages. First, build needs to happen. If it succeeds, it's automatically created in RHEL. This is like a CentOS infrastructure. This is a RHEL infrastructure. Um, if a build succeeds, it automatically is built in the RHEL in build system as well. They land in tags. Tags are like Koji thing that we can put to packages to like keep track of where they're going. Um, the gate tag means it's succeeded and it's ready to be gated. Then it goes through gating, which are like automatic tests. Both builds are tested. And if both pass, they will both progress. If one fails, nothing progresses. So they kept in sync. Um, lands in the candidate. And then there's verification, which is all sorts of Red Hat paperwork and the maintainer like intentionally clicking, yes, I want to progress it further. It doesn't really matter. It just goes through that and then in CentOS stream, when it reaches that stage, it goes to release and also to the build route. Um, so that's how you can keep track of what's happening. Only RHEL maintainers can build packages, so this is mostly like just so you can keep track of what's coming in. This is how it looks in the build system. There's the URL. Um, that's the same package. And if I scroll down, there's the tags. There's the gate, candidate pending. So that's how you can know if it's landing in a release or like what it's waiting for if it doesn't have any of the tags. Um, release. Let's talk about how release works. Um, so there's like three things. Uh, someone's writing on my slides. That's really rude, by the way. But they have a point. What's a compose? There's like a repos, <laughs> images, all sorts of things I'll show you. There's testing, there's release to mirrors. So let's have a look at the diagram. 
That's the three tags that we've been talking about. There's two more. Guess what they mean? Um, pending sign, that just happens automatically. It gets signed. And then compose, there's like a different arrow because we don't really do that. We don't put that to the package. This is an inheritance. That's how I chose to visualize it. Um, then we create two composes. Um, the production compose is the main one that's signed content and then development. If you don't want to wait for like all the paperwork to progress, you can just get packages like that pass test. Not necessarily everyone, will, everything will move it over, but it's there. And then the release, well, the compose is tested first, and then it's pushed to mirrors and other places, and that's how it's released. If you look into the release, there's a bunch of things in there. There's like repositories and a bunch of images. We have two repositories based on and upstream. That's where most of the things are. If you want things like devil packages, it's in the CRB, unknown acronym, mysterious repository. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then we have the add-ons. There's like all sorts of interesting things. Then there's the images. We have DVD, ISO, net install, ISO, container, AWS, and stuff like that. Um, if that's not enough, there's the alternative images SIG that Troy's gonna talk about, and there's even things like KDE Live image, which is interesting. You should go to his talk. Um, KDE's the best. KDE's the best. Um, all right, so. Uh, who's doing that again? Okay, tell me more about testing. Fine, I will tell you more about testing, but I'll have a drink first. This is so good. All right, testing. What's testing? Um, I would like to introduce the CentOS integration SIG that's been created, I want to say earlier this year. I think it was last year. It doesn't matter. Um, it's a SIG within the CentOS project. Um, let me just go to the testing Jenkins. Of course it's a Jenkins. Um, that's, where we <laughs> <laughs> that's where we test every compose automatically, the production composes. This is CentOS Stream 9. It's using the ancient CentOS uh, the T functional test suite has been in the CentOS project forever. But if you go to the 10 tab, the text changed. That's because we have switched the testing to the integration SIG. So my team is no longer really managing the testing. It's the integration SIG who's doing it. Um, there's all the tests. Everything failed. It's a pre-release. There's no shame in that. I'm glad we have the tests. Um, but what, what I can show you is that we have AR64, PowerPC, x86, and then these are all VMs, and then x86 bare, me bare metal machine. We install them from the latest Compose, like a fresh box, and run the entire test suite on that. So the let's have one, a... The last ones didn't fail. The last one didn't fail? It's not there, but like, if you open it now, there, are, there is some green on that page. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> we have a green test, yes. <laughs> all right, that's the website of the integration SIG. It'll tell you all sorts of interesting things, but I want to go to the Compose test section. Um, that's going to describe how the compose tests work and stuff. And there's a repo where you can contribute. Um, this is, by the way, Carlos, who did most of the, all of the work. He took all the T functional tests and just changed them into, migrated them into a TMT test format. So it's a community member. Thank you very much for doing that. Um, and if you want to contribute tests, that's the thing. That's how you can do it. Um, we'll be switching nine to this in a bit as well. Speaking of SIGs, let's talk about SIGs, which means special interest group. Sorry for using an acronym without explaining it. Um, I think this is what the CentOS project is about. So what's a CentOS project? It's not a square, it's a rectangle. All right. Um, <laughs> now there's a bunch of stuff. There's CentOS stream, there's a bunch of SIGs in there. And you can see they're like on the same-ish level. CentOS project is not just about CentOS stream, it's about the SIGs primarily. Um, there's the hyperscale SIG, the outward SIG, alternative images SIG, a bunch of other SIGs, cloud, automotive K-modes, the integration SIG, and they all create something that has, a, that has like a use case in the world. For example, the hyperscale SIG, they do some changes to make things work in a huge scale. They change system D and stuff, and they make like their own, almost like a Linux distribution. Um, the automotive SIG does something similar, Alternative images just builds images for CentOS stream. I said just, I didn't mean just. It's just English is not my first language. Um, SIGs, they're great. Um, we have two build systems. 
in the project. CS Koji and the CB is Koji. <laughs> All right, that's just me being silly. Um, it's actually the CentOS stream Koji, and then the community build system, which is also a Koji. Um, the CentOS stream Koji does read only outside Red Hat because only Red Hat employees can build in there. But the community build system, that's where all the SIGs live. They're both the same kind of build system. They're just different instances. But they should be very similar-ish environments. Um, Yes, uh, you can find some documentation which is mostly up to date um, about SIG governance. It'll show you things about SIG governance and it'll show you how you can start a SIG or retire a SIG and like all sorts of processes in there. Or you can also, we should really update that. Um, or you can also join one of the existing SIGs. They all have their different rules because they're sort of independent and you can find them online. And that's what I think the project is about. All right, but CentOS Stream. Let's talk about contributions to CentOS Stream. And I showed this, and the contributions, I mean specifically just CentOS Stream. As I said, six have their own rules. But before that, we need to really internalize one thing, that CentOS Stream sources are rel sources. They're the same thing. Um, and if you want to contribute to CentOS Stream, we sort of have to talk about rel. And there's this document online, it's called Application Compatibility Guideline, or ACG, because we love acronyms. And if you go in there, you will see all the details, and it will show you some terminology, application programming interface, AB, API, ABI. It will show you all sorts of things. Um, there's a compatibility levels like one, or two, or three, or four. Um, there's a bunch of exceptions, because of course there are exceptions. There's guidelines for things, and it's just like, there's a lot of stuff, and you might find another one, Red Hat Enterprise Linux Lifecycle, and that will show you again. Beautiful document, there's like stages, it's gonna describe, there's a table showing everything. Um, there's like all the phases, there's a full support phase, there's a maintenance support phase, there's an extended life phase, and there's this graph, which is actually really useful to see. Um, let's zoom on that. Red Hat Enterprise Linux comes in like dot releases. You can see this like every half a year, there's a new release coming out, and CentOS Stream is like in the in there. It doesn't have point releases, so you just have nine, for example, and it gets sort of branched into rel. But we don't have any point releases. There's not really like known way to know which rel is built from that. So that's how CentOS Stream fits in the picture. But my main point is that if you want to contribute to CentOS Stream, you're changing a company's product, so it might be. There's things that we need to consider. Um, but it's possible, we welcome contributions, and there's like three steps to do it. You need to start with a JIRA ticket, talk to ma the maintainer first so they know it's coming, and if you agree on that, you can send the merge requests, and then it's up to the maintainer whether they merge it or not, like in many projects. Um, so what kind of stuff you can send in? You can send bug fixes, that should be fairly easy to do. Something's broken, you fix it, excellent. Thank you so much. Um, you can do stable updates from upstream. That's a beautiful word. What does it mean? <laughs> um, <laughs> it means we talked about the ABI, ABI compatibility very briefly. It's basically Red Hat makes some promises to customers that we're not gonna break them. You don't wanna break them, so if you, if you do an update that doesn't break any of the promises, it should be welcome in, you can do that. Um, backported features, this is a fun work. Um, because you can sometimes go to a newer version that's gonna break something, but there's still features that we wanted to do. So a bunch of work the maintainers do is they're backporting features. They take a newer version and they just take the features from it and backport it to the old one so they don't break any, anyone else. But we get the new features. Um, it's a lot of work, but it's valuable. You can send those too. Um, ABI incompatible updates. Please no, we will have to reject them. That's not a place for that. Um, documentation, typos, man pages, you could. But you saw that the process is sort of involved. Way better way to do that if you're like a Red Hat customer, you can go to the customer portal, there's like a report, um, change things. But this can be sent, but I don't know if they get a priority. Um, and if you want to do like more disruptive updates, that's of course possible, but you will need to go through a longer hoop. 
with a Fedora logo, with a beautiful Fedora logo, because everything starts in Fedora. Um, and in Fedora, you can do anything that Fedora wants. Red Hat won't tell you what to do in Fedora. So that's the place for like bigger changes and stuff like that. I have a picture that will show you. Someone's waiting on the slides again. Whoa. Is it Troy? I think Troy's doing it. Anyway, but they have a point. Wow. Um, yeah, Fedora is easier to change. CentOS Stream is harder to change. Of course, RHEL is a product. But my point here is that if you want to do disruptive changes or like a lot of interesting stuff, do it in Fedora. But CentOS Stream is also possible to change. Um, they have, Fedora has sources, CentOS Stream and RHEL have their own sources. This also shows that Fedora has like the RHEL build flags and there's like a package difference. Wait, why do we have like 10 times less packages in RHEL? Is it worse than Fedora? I mean, I was just staring at wondering what the number for Oh, that's a European number. That's 2.5K. Yes. <laughs> that's how we do numbers in Europe. We've yes. swapped those to be more clear to people. Um, but, oh, what about Apple? Yes, what about Apple? I wonder if there's something that we could do, that we could take some of these packages and make them useful in that environment. And probably we could. I think Fedora is way too useful not to do that. But I'm not going to tell you anything about it, because you should go to Kairos and Troy's talk later, and they're going to talk about Apple. Um, I guess that's it. That's my talk. Um, there's some summaries. The way I see it, if you want to do innovation in, Fedora, in an operating system itself, go to the Fedora project. Um, that's where it all happens. You also get the latest and greatest in there. They're on this sort of life cycle. What I mean by that is that they release every six months and keep it alive for 13 months so you can upgrade every half a year or every year. That's up to you. If you, on the other hand, want to innovate on top of the OS, and maybe you don't really want to get invested by the OS, in the OS, CentOS project might be the place for you um, because there's a CentOS stream, OS maintained by real engineers for you, so you don't really need to care about that. And you can build on top of it in SIGs. Um, the life cycle there is every three months you get a new version. Hmm? Kept alive every three years you get a new version. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that would be, that would be very, very interesting. Sorry. Every three years. <laughs> and then it's kept alive for like five-ish years. Um, if you're a RHEL customer or if you're building on top of RHEL, CentOS Stream is also a great thing to run in your CI to preview what's coming in the next minor version. Um, so that's the two projects. I think they all have, they both have their own purpose. And that's my talk. Thank you for coming. Okay. There's random links as we have questions, so we don't start the thank you. Um, yeah. Yes, I have a question. Um, two. Hi. Um, two related questions. Like number one, like uh, you mentioned, CR, uh, the you know, like uh, CentOS being broken into different repos. How do you when you import a package from Fedora and it has like, hey, that's like 50 new sub packages. Who does the triage? Like, how do you decide which package go to CRB and which package is not kept? Second question is for the SIG. Can we get the same CI and like uh, gating and everything that you have like on the stream side? All right, good question. Um, how do we decide about the about what goes into what repo? That's just at Red Hat's discretion. They decide that, and CentOS Stream just inherits that. So you're um, <laughs> and sorry, what was the second question? Oh, CI. Yeah. Can we get the same getting mechanism? Because right now for six it's you build yeah. getting your load yes. Whenever you release something, the CD stack for release and it shows up in the mirrors after five minutes. Can we get the same file? Oh if we could get something. Nice to yeah, so if we get get, get like similar gating for CentOS yes. six yes. like we get for Cent yes. for CentOS stream, I can't see why not. That would be something we would need to do in the CentOS project. That's not really Red Hat's thing to do, but yeah, I personally would like it. There's an infrastructure SIG in CentOS Stream that might be an interesting place to work with, or we can just figure something out with the, within the project, but that would be the community side. And yeah. Yes, yeah, so I, I was laughing. Yeah. All right. Uh, Any other questions? Yeah. Related to this, can we get body? <laughs> 
to CentOS stream, probably not because it follows the rel lifecycle, uh, the rel workflow. For SIGs, maybe. Again, that would be for the project to work on. Um, why not? That would be nice, I think, in my opinion. Neil. Aren't you part of the project? <laughs> <laughs> I am part of the project, and that's why I'm saying I would like it. Um, can I help you with that? Maybe if I have time? I don't know. You're also part of the project. Maybe you can do it. You can <laughs> the project as if you're not part of it. Oh, sorry. That's just English not being my first language. I'm part of the project. I feel like I'm part of the project. We. We. Um, yes. Question. So I heard there was a technical presentation a few years ago about the RHEL ABI compatibility. Do you have a link to that? Was that? You gave it. <laughs> ah. I don't have a link to that. I'm sorry, but do you have a link for that? Would you like to self promote? <laughs> it was at the dojo in like 2021. But okay. yeah, it's a 35 minute deep dive on how that works. So if you're curious. Okay, yeah, so that will be recording. So find Santos Dojo 2021. Yeah, they'll be recording. Mike? Something we keep hitting is uh, what I call uh, mismet expectations on contributions. So uh, you kind of mentioned it here. Step one, go talk to the contributor. Uh, I don't know any, or maybe they're out there, but there aren't too many major open source projects where you can just do kind of like a, a drive-by merge request. Like if I just showed up at the kernel and dropped a, a merge request, it'd be about the same experience as I have in CentOS Stream. But as I go and look at those things, like I don't, maybe I'm missing it, but I don't feel like we ever link to the contribution. Is it like, is that slide that you presented on the CentOS site somewhere that we can link to? <sighs> yes, there's a documentation. The first link is the best that we have right now. Um, it shows you all the steps that you can do. Um, if you go to like the section with good and bad examples, it's going to say TBD. So that's something that we should absolutely work on. And I was talking to the CentOS board just two or three days ago, and we would really like to prioritize that and get that done so there's like more comprehensive guidelines. Um, yeah, but we're, I, I agree that um, you can't just show up and like merge request to any project. So we need to set the expectations right in there. And yeah, I agree with you. I'd say there's even another document we could add, which is the container compatibility matrix, right? And like when you're contributing to stream, there are, like you said, so many things you have to consider and that just makes it harder, but yeah. But if you go to the first URL, you can click the edit button and if you'd like to contribute, you would be welcome. I have merge, merge permissions to the repo, so we can really make it happen finally. Um, all right, any other questions? Yes. Uh, actually, I've been curious, uh, do we have any metrics uh, or, uh, or data on uh, the number of, well, not, maybe, not, maybe not drive-by contributions, but uh, contributions by non-Red Hat maintainers that CentOS Stream has received? I'm sure we do, and David might have a question answer. So I have a way to get the data, and I uh, because it's fairly easy to extract it from GitLab. However, the last time I did any kind of data analysis was in college, and it was using Excel. So if anybody knows how to do like data analysis stuff on a giant CSV file and turn it into pretty graphs, I am more than happy to hand this over, and you can take a give a try at it. But yeah, that data is fairly easy to get out of GitLab, and the GitLab API makes it straightforward, and GitLab.com doesn't seem to mind just being dosed with API requests. Uh, it ta I think I, it takes like an overnight, basically, to scrape all of the repos, because it's like thousands of repos. Just ask uh, I'm sure that would be great. I will not repeat the suggestion. Um, OK, I don't seem to have a session chair, but we're out of time. Thanks for much. Uh, thank you for coming, and I'll see you around. Thank you.